No. We're in our next podcast. We've already started. No, no. Yes. No, start over. Go. Thanks, Nigel. <laughs> no, no, did you really do that? Go. We're going. No. Yes, this uh, is it. No. Cold Let's, open. Let me tell you about these cold. Super cold open. Oh, I hate cold opens. Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. And welcome to Board Game Snobs. I'm Gobby. I'm Jerry. That was Jerry. Yeah. Today... We're going to talk about board games. We're going to talk about board games. We're going to talk about one of the funnest days we had in a long time. It was a good day. We took off uh, July the 4th. Most people we have had off. off. We had yes. off. We didn't take off. And we so we off. just gathered and we called up everybody we liked to invite them over and nobody showed. Which is all but two people. And so we had Enrique. Enrique was here. And we had an alternate. We had Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus. I did not realize that was his name. Mm-hmm. He doesn't go by Zacchaeus. He goes by Zach. He calls Zach. Yeah, because he thinks the chaos is weird. Uh, it's an unusual name, but I like it. Tom makes him sound it's like a he's a strong ro- like he's a Roman. This is a chaos. The chaos. It's he a has, good strong name. He has a mustache. It's better than Gabrielle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I won't argue with you there. <laughs> I won't argue with you there, Gabrielle. We oh. played the most cutthroat game that of the cutthroat games. Jerry's favorite, Game of Thrones, but. We played with an expansion, A Feast for Crows, which, uh, what do crows eat? Are they carrions? Do they eat bodies? Mm, yes. Mm. Are they? Yes. Crows are incredibly intelligent. Uh, so I hear. Yes. I don't see any in college, though. So. Well, they'll recognize you. What we, are they going to do? Well, they know that, she, that it's you. How do they know me? Nah, because they can tell by your shiny bald head. <laughs> and they go, look at that fat guy. And they're all I like... Think, I think all they do is... Murder people, and that's why they're called murders. The, right? a, yeah, a large group of crows is yeah. called a murder. Why? Seems rude. Well, it's just a term. Is that what you wanted? How does murder mean slaying the life of one person? Unless you're a group of crows, and it means you should all hang out together. Yeah. Wouldn't that, that be weird? Make any sense. You know, it's like we have gangs here. What if they called it something else? Like that's what the problem is. Gang. That sounds cool. If we called it like a gaggle, <laughs> look at yes. that. <laughs> So what gaggle are you a part of? Gaggle of guys what over gaggle there. Gaggle of guys. Everybody would drop out. They all have knives. That's interesting. <laughs> There's a Why gaggle. Why are they coming at me? Gaggle. <laughs> this gaggle of guys is coming after me. No. It doesn't hold the sign. No, see, it sounds weird. Yeah. That would end gang violence, as we know it. <laughs> so let's start that. So, Murder of Crows was an interesting expansion. A feast for crows. Oh. Same thing. Okay. If you have a feast... How many crows are going to be there? At least two. A bunch of them. So that's a murder. It's a feast. You got a bunch of crows together, murder. But you see, they didn't call it a feast for murder, because that would have been weird. That's like Donner Party. Well, <laughs> yes. History. Um, cannibalism. Yeah. So, I don't know who the Donners are. You do? The Dahmers? Donner. Dahmers? Donner. Same thing. Nope. They both hate people. Buy a book. <laughs> anyway, a weird bathroom. <laughs> What a weird... Yeah. <laughs> that was uh, not something you want to see in the magazine rack. <laughs> okay. From Game of Thrones to cannibalism. Go ahead. Game of Thrones, if you don't know of it... I'll is... let you do most talking, so this is your favorite game of all time. All right. I Thank you for that, Gab- I'm Gabriella. I'm turn, my mic. turn that off. Uh, a Game of Thrones I'm gonna listen to Jewel. by Fantasy Flight. Great company. Great company. That owns nearly everything. Everything. Wait, wait, wait. Quish. It, quish- Are they? <laughs> Go ahead. I'll listen to your I've quish- got a question. I got a question. Go ahead. Yeah. Are they Asmodee? Uh, they were purchased by Asmodee, but they so did not So they're under change. the Asmodee banner. They're on the Asmodee. Yes. They have been bought okay. out. They sold out. Interesting. So that- Now they they sold out, but literally. Yeah. They, they, sold they literally sold out. <laughs> okay. Doesn't necessarily mean they went against their own principles, which is what sold out should mean. No, but they literally took the principle of their company and sold it to another. Okay. So they okay. Did Does that make sense? Themselves. They sold themselves. They sold themselves. Which also could be bad. That's very bad. <laughs> One should not sell themselves, <laughs> even if it's for a billion dollars, which is probably not how if much. If I had a billion, billion dollars. No, no. Hey, let me look up Baronic Letters real quick. Uh, so Game We're of Thrones. We're going to segue this podcast into a musical podcast. 
<laughs> where we just review songs from the 90s. A Game of Thrones is a six, uh, it's a three to six player game of negotiation and area control. You do not have to be a fan of a Game of Thrones to play this game. The first time I played a Game of Thrones, the second edition, <laughs> I, had, I had no clue what Game of Thrones was really about or anything. I never watched an episode. It is a great, great game. However, two things about it. Number one, there's a 40, well, three things about it. There's a 40 page rule book and a lot of errata on Board Game Geek to clarify some of the rules. It's the game is. Hold on, hold up. Sometimes you throw terms out there that, I mean, as board game snobs, uh huh. We understand. Right. So do you want me to clarify what, what a rule book someone, is? What if someone just tuned in and like, hey, we're going to check out this podcast. Two cool guys. Two wild and crazy guys. <laughs> Another super old reference. What is errata? For the listeners, I know what it means. It's a gathering of rats. It's a, a murder of it's rats. It's a group of rats. No, it's it's the errata. It's the it's the Oh, that sounds different. That sounds weird. <laughs> it's basically the errors or the clarification of the rules. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Errat errat is it errata or is it errata? I don't know, but you're making this weird and I'm moving along. Okay, go ahead. Uh so the game, once you've learned it, it's very easy. It's very straightforward. People tend to make it more than what it, more out of it than what it really should be. Number two, five hours. If you play it with six people, you're going to play a five hour game. Oh my god! It's long and it's it's tiresome to play it. But our first game was brutal. Seven hours. I enjoyed it. Oh, it's good. But it was a brutal I game. Love, we played it at the full six players. Love that game. You taught it to us. We learned it. We started about nine o'clock. I think we did finished about five o'clock. Oh, man, that evening. it was good. It was good. And DJ won. Oh yeah, Darn. because he came down from the south, from the north, from the north. You come down, right. from north, <laughs> you come down from the north. You go up from the south. <laughs> he came down from the north with his murder. Yes, and his, murdered. Yes, and after I betrayed him. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was a wonderful game. Like he literally did not much the whole game. He was kind of just in the background. But then the last few, what do you have to do for victory in the game? Uh, you, uh, well, in the base game, you capture seven uh, strongholds or castles, okay, which so he did. He must have come down the last few minutes and captured a stronghold or two. Very did. As he me, did. I remember me and Zacchaeus and you were in the middle of the map. We fought. And we just fought back and forth the whole we time. We fought. Many a times we backstab each other. And I f usually backstab me always. I did. And it makes me angry. And it hurts my feelings. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think you are. I am. I this game, literally your first move this game was betraying me <laughs> and siding with Enrique. Enrique is my bruh. As the I kids say. I was the say. My bruh. You were who? I was the who Baratheons. I, I'm always the Baratheons. Enrique was Greyjoys. Grey, no, yeah, he what? was the Greyjoys. No, not this game. This game, he was the. Hey, he was people. the expansion that I can't remember. The Aryans. Uh, <laughs> no, not the Aryans. That's the nation. <laughs> the Aryans. <laughs> Sorry about that. Another. They are all white. Well, no, that's another. <laughs> uh, that's another gang. Another yes, uh, murder. No, another. What oh. was the term that we're trying to use for gangs now? Uh, gaggle, gaggle. That's the another gaggle. Gaggle of people. Gaggle of people. Yes. <laughs> so he was the expansion. And uh, anyway, long story short, Game <laughs> of Thrones. Man, this has gone downhill. We we're super fast. This we is. Just we're go, ten minutes if in. We did not follow just every thought we possessed. We might could get through a podcast without heavy editing. Hey, well, no, no, all about that heavy uh -huh. editing. I'm all about. Okay. Anyways, if you like air control, but more importantly, if you like negotiation. I don't actually I love I'm terrible negotiation. At it. Literally, the first negotiating I did was with you. Yep. I thought I had you. You thought, you thought, <clears throat> but I'm slippery. You're a snake. You're a slippery snake. How dare you? I thought you were in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. Enrique started to attack me. I was like, Jerry, I need you right now. Help the Lannisters. I was like, nah. He's like, <laughs> no. You were like, yeah. <laughs> and then Enrique yes. attacks and yes. Baratheon's like hey Enrique I will help you defeat the Lannisters and my heart broke and I was worthless from there on out I, I watched the I actually told you I'd give up from there on out yes you did but I didn't I actually came in third <laughs> out of four 
<laughs> out of four. Hey, that's not last. That's not last. Uh, anyways, this game, the, there's the expect- Feast for Crows. Uh, yes, a Feast for Crows. Specifically. Crows, specifically. Makes the game for four players. Now, you can buy the vanilla game, the base game, and play it for four with four players, but it's not any good. The way that the map set up. It's not a three-player game. It's not a four-player game. You can play the base game at five players, and one of the players down south will have a pretty heavy advantage. It's best at six players. But if you have four players and you have the Feast for Crows expansion, it turns the game into a much more quicker, enjoyable experience. It was just two and a half hours, I believe it was. Two hours? Yeah, something like that. was great. Now, the thing about Game of Thrones is that you have to realize, if you don't know about it, is that there is a negotiation aspect cobbled with deterministic, uh, the way it resolve uh, with the combat. So basically, you pretty well know going into a situation how many men you have, how many men your opponent have, and who's going to win. It comes down to who is going to help you, who's going to side with you. So the neighboring territories, if they are other players... They will commit their forces to help you, and that's where the negotiation comes from. And you don't know who's going to be on your side until it happens. And so there is a lot of backstabbing when I, you promise one player that you're going to help them, and then when they attack this person, you're like, nah, never mind, we didn't show yeah, up. Jerry. Yeah. Or you tell them you're going to help them, and then... Oh, you showed up just on the other, other side. Other <laughs> side, yes. Which is, it is one of the greatest feelings in the game, it of is. knowing that you have backstabbed I'm somebody. sure it is on your side. It but is. on my side, my heart broke. It makes me... But that, actually, I mean, I was angry. You were angry. This game made me angry. You yelled. I was upset. But I love the fact that a board game brought that out in me. Mm. Just the fact that I was that into it. We had this going on. It was thematic. It is an amazing game. Zacchaeus was yeah, up north. He won. He was House Stark. Literally. Okay, so I was House Lannister. We're kind of in the middle. In a four-player game on Feast for Crows, it blocks out the southern, yeah. all the south. All the south is uh, All the south is, uh, uh, you can't, inaccessible. So what you just said? Unassailable. Unassailable and inaccessible. Yes. That is correct. Oh, my battery's running low. I'll have to plug it back in. Your laptop or yourself? <laughs> Either one. Um, hold on. As I plug my computer in. So... In the Feast for Crows, the South is inaccessible, unassailable. So me and Jerry were down South. As uh, I was Lannisters, he was Baratheon, and then Enrique was kind of in the middle, and then the North was Zacchaeus. Me and you battled. Me and Enrique battled. I probably battled, what did you say, seven, eight times? I battled eight times. Okay. I kept track of my battles. I probably battled about the same then. Uh, Zach, twice, twice lost, lost both, both times. Won the game. Won the game because with a uh, feast for crows, you're going off a victory point condition, which is occupy these areas and get a victory point at the end of the round. Zach was so smart in the way that he played that at the end of the game, me and him both tied, and it came down to a tiebreaker who had the most land, and he did, and he won it because he maneuvered and negotiated without battle. And won the game. He was attacked twice. And each time he attacked, he was attacked, he lost. But he still won the game. Yes. That is why I love this game as a negotiation game. It's not my favorite area control. No. But when it comes to negotiation... You might get a point for that. I love, love Game of Thrones. It is one of the best games that has... It, it, it was my favorite game. It may, it probably still is my favorite game. I think it is probably. It's probably I still well, I actually, foam at the mouth thinking of it. And... Feast for Crows probably being, is it, uh, I don't know, is it specifically for four players? Yes, it's all it is, is four players. Okay. That made it move up in my book. Great. Yes. Because now, Game of Thrones, six player, I mean, it was great. It was all fine. Day. But it was a six to seven hour game with us learning it, and I was like, burn out. Now, I would rather, if right now, the way it stands, if you said, let's play Twilight Imperium, or play a six-player Game of Thrones, because they're going to be the same length almost. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm going to play Twilight Imperium. Yeah. But a four-player Game of Thrones with the Feast of Crows expansion a any day. Love it. You can drag together four players. If you are, if your board game group loves negotiation, you have to have this game. 
the second edition by the expansion, you will not regret it. It is one of the funnest games I have ever played. It thank, is. It. Thank you, Christopher Peterson, for making it. <laughs> the former owner who sold out of Fantasy Flight. You did a wonderful job. Fantasy Flight Games has a 23 minute tutorial. And it's wor- and it's if you watch that. If tutorial, you watch it, you know what you're doing. You know what you're getting. And it, it's crazy that this game is that big, that long. But it, in 23 minutes, you get very much the general idea of what you need to do. Crack open a bottle of whiskey, sit around the table with your friends, and negotiate your way over who's going to win. And what the best thing about this game is, is that whoever wins was the person that played it the best. This is my question for you. The game not, the game. Not a question. Okay. More of a statement. You're going to make a statement? I'm going to make a statement. That seems powerful. I'm going to stand on this hill, make a statement. Go ahead. It can be conducive to the game as well. Right. But conducive. Whatever whatever game you play has to do how much you enjoy with uh, <laughs> I, I would I would prefer it. I would prefer if you would string together a sentence. Whatever game you play yes. matters very much so on the people you play with. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could have played Game of Thrones. I could have played Game of Thrones. With, okay. For instance, I'm going to go I'm gonna go back a step here. Take it back. What's the Game of Coasters? The Game of Coasters? Skull? Skull. Yes. Ah. I played Skull. Skull with you, Bubba, Enrique. We play it with other, with us and a few others. Playing Skull with me is the greatest time. Is, well, <laughs> anything with you, Jerry, is a joy. Go ahead. For a cry. <laughs> uh, Skull. Yeah. With us, a blast. Wonderful. One of my, we're one of my favorite games. We were fun people. We're too wild and you crazy play, guys. You play fun games with fun people. I tried to demonstrate that game to some younger folks. Oh, let's just come out and say it. Millennials. Millennials. They didn't quite get it. They were disinterested. Too busy on their I Twitter. I did not enjoy that game of skulls at all because it's like they just refused to want to enjoy it. I'm yeah. like, oh, y'all, what? What are you doing? This is an awesome game. I didn't enjoy it. Like Game of Thrones, with, but that I mean I know that's with any game, but the four of us, me, you, Zach, Enrique, we're all fun people. Me, you, and Enrique. The, we, we're the kind of the threesome that play every game together. Super fun. <laughs> well, at least two of us. Well, I mean, don't don't be hard on yourself. <laughs> Holy Enrique, Enrique, I, I have to have somebody I can beat. Okay, yeah. So Enrique comes in the play. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love how I love how when we play a game that's a new game. And all it is is that me and Gabby explain it to each other, one to the other, and we completely ignore Enrique, and Enrique spends the rest of the game just doing stuff. <laughs> just like, having no clue of what we're doing. He's like, I'm invading, I'm invading Italy. Well, this is Concordia. You, you don't invade, you just trade. Oh, what's with this Some line? Some games! Some games! Enrique will make moves, and you get angry at him. We're like, Enrique, what are you doing? That's a terrible move. I'm like, Jerry, just let it go. Let Enrique do his thing. You want to constantly, you want to train your son. I want to train him. He's your, he's your adoptive I've son. I've adopted him. You've tried to take him in, to teach him I'm gaming. showing him the way. But he, does, he refuses to listen. <laughs> he is my Padawan. He does not want to listen. He's the Anakin. He does not want to listen. One of these days, I'm going to take the high ground. <laughs> I'm going to cut him in half. So, uh, but Game of Thrones, love it. Feast for Crows, buy it. Uh, if the, you play four, buy Feast for Crows. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the next game we played was a different type of kingdom. Still cutthroat, but very much lighter. We played Bunny Kingdoms again. Quite as much interaction. Yes, we played Bunny Kingdoms again to kind of clean our palate off of such a heavy game and realize that it, it, yeah, it's, it holds true. It is still one of the f- the funner or probably. it's the best car draft. Game. I just I, I got to thinking about this. Seven Wonders is an amazingly designed game. I do not like Seven Wonders. 
Me neither. I don't like Seven Wonders Duel. I don't like drafting games, period. I don't like drafting games, period. In general. I, I say that. But, cause, but I, I appreciate that. that Bruno Cathala took Seven Wonders. It plays the same at three players as it does at seven. The, it, it is the same length and the same strategy. It is a wonderful game in terms of its design. I just don't enjoy it. So in terms of drafting, Bunny Kingdoms was just such a very light it's a very light game. Richard Garfield, L.O. made it, the yellow with an eye. And it's just a, it's just a very clean... When I make with, yellow, it's going to be called Funny Kingdoms. Funny Kingdoms? And it's just a bunch of clowns making yes. their little kingdoms? A gaggle Outside of clowns? Stories. Huh? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Bozo. A bozo? If you watched Bozo growing up... Uh, he freaked me out. You did? Yes. Uh, I didn't like it. Yeah, he did. Clowns in general. I don't like clowns. I, I'm not of the super paranoid. Clowns don't like, like I don't have a legitimate phobia. But Bozo, the clown from Chicago, he was always on WGN. Yeah. Uh, he always was kind of weird to yeah, me. Yeah, he freaked me out. I I don't, that's Mr. Rogers. How do we go with him? I don't Wait, know. Wait, what? <laughs> I think you mentioned Funny Mr. Kingdoms. Rogers. But Bunny Kingdoms, Bunny Kingdoms. <clears throat> Uh, Yellow, Funny Kingdoms, Y-E-L-L-O-W. Love it. Look forward in the future. Love it. Funny Kingdoms. Kickstarter coming in 2019. Uh, Love Bunny Kingdoms. Still a great game. Then we played a new addition. Wait, wait, wait. wait, You're you're zipping past Bunny Kingdoms? Well, rabbits are fast. No. Okay, Bunny Kingdoms. Go ahead. Listen. Bunny Kingdoms. We played Jerry. uh, We played Bunny Kingdoms. Zacchaeus had left. John John had stepped in. John John, uh, probably the closest to a genius we have in our friend group. Yeah, he's bona fide. So he plays Bunny Kingdoms, and he is zoomed to first place. Zoom. Jerry has counted himself out and thusly counted everyone else out, because if Jerry's not second, then who could possibly be? He kept saying, there's no way anybody's going to get close to John. There's no way anybody's going to get close to John. Well, hey, here comes old Gabby coming up from the rear, the slow and steady turtle (laughs) to John John's bunny. And I bypassed you for another second place landing in Bunny Kingdoms. Second place. And I was 10 points behind John John. You're proud of... uh, I needed one more carrot and I would have beat John John. I want to bring out... One more carrot, one more... Either a carrot or a wood, I would have beat John John. I want to break out. But you had discounted me. I want to break out that if you're if you're if you can repeat somebody's first name twice, if your name is John John or Ray Ray, you're automatically cool in our book. Well, yeah. Anyways, do you know that a group of rabbits, of wild rabbits, is called a fluffle? <laughs> <laughs> now that's just adorable. A, a, a regular group of rabbits called a colony, but they say that there's uh, people saying a wild group of rabbits. It's called a fluffle. Well, that's just adorable. Have you ever seen a fluffle of rabbits? Now, why do rabbits get fluffle, but crows get murder? Well, it's not. People that don't like crows. Not, people don't like that crows. Not, <laughs> that seems not good Come to join the murder. Mm. Mm. If you could join a murder or a fluffle, which would you join? I would probably join the murder. Because you're dark. Yes. I would join the fluffle. Nobody wants to be a feast for fluffle. <laughs> <laughs> I love bunnies. And key cats. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next game we played is the newest edition that I was so excited to bring to the group that Gumby hasn't played that I played at BGG Spring High Society. And here's the thing. I love bidding games. I love auction games. High Society, if you listen to our top five of BGG Spring, was on it. Gabby, what did you think of High Society? Um, I loved it. Loved it? Loved it, loved it, or loved it? I loved it, loved it. Wow. Now, now we're about hold to on. Get it. I know. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Wait, hold on. There's, well, there's, there's, what? There's a caveat. Where are we at? There's a caveat. What's going on? A caveat is called uh, when Gobby changes his mind. <laughs> uh, so basically, high society. Let me explain the game. I did win it once. You did win it once. Out of our four games we played. Quick bidding game. The theme is that you're just a bunch of rich 1% people who are trying to keep up appearances. You have a handful of cards, which are money, ranging from like $1,000 to $25,000 cards. You bid on basically victory point cards that come out. 
when you put down a card, you cannot pick it up. So you can't make change with what you've put down in front of you. That's an important aspect of the game. As the game goes around, whoever bids the most gets the victory points. What's the catch? The catch is that at the end of the game, whoever has the least amount of money in their hands is out. So generally, the person who has the most victory points because they spent the most money, they have the less, least amount of money at the everybody at the table, so they're automatically disqualified. So generally, the second place player wins the game. But another twist. Are you ready for this? There's cards that you don't yeah. want. That you're bidding not to take, that you're spending money not to get rid of, that to get rid of. There are cards that cut your victory points in half, or cards that uh, cause you to lose uh, other victory point cards. So it, those are called faux pas. Ha 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 ha. Faux pas. Faux pas. Anyways, high society, probably my favorite light bidding game. Yes, by far. It beats out for me. No thanks, which is probably the classic. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather play High Society than No Thanks in a heartbeat, as huh? far as bidding. I'd rather play High Society than For Sale. Boom. I was just about to say that. This they is are, why I love you. They're very similar. Yes. But High Society, for me, beats No Sale. High Society, Zacchaeus won the first game, literally, with one point. Which made me... <laughs> because it was so crazy. Very Like, all, all the... Okay, what's the end game? Three green cards or something? The green cards are special cards that are in the deck, and once four of the the fourth one has come out, the game is automatically over. And so that's just that, so the game can be very quick. It can be it can be for the first four cards, or it can hypothetically, or yes, or it could just go all the way down to the bottom of the so, deck. So like I had bid, Jerry had bid, Zacchaeus had bid, and like between the three of us. We had bid on the, these negative cards and these green cards, and Zach had bid on a one-point card or something. I forget. I had bid on something that was like four, but then I had to minus something. It was crazy. It was crazy. Crazy. And then the fourth green card come out, and, and I, Zach had one point to your zero, my zero, and then nobody Rick, else had even Rick done minus Rick 18. Yes. Uh, the deal is, is that he got that one point card because nobody bid on it. It was given yes. to him by for free. Yeah, that's right. Everybody that's right. Won. So he yes. won. And so it's that type of and type we of just game. hollered and screamed and laughed. High society was the game that got us in trouble at BGG for being too loud. Yes. And Bubba Enrique and, and Paul. Um, faux Paul. Faux Paul. High society has replaced for sale for my. It, it, it is now in my bag of games. You have for sale? Yes, I do. It's because in, you had it. I had it here, and then I guess I gave it yeah, back have to it. you. Yeah, I have it. One of the games that I For just, Sale, a solid game. I, like I really it. like For I Sale. I like it. But High Society, uh, as far as... Bidding. Bidding and just the excitement of who's going to get what, and that last part of whoever has the least amount yeah, of money that is gets you out, every that single gets time. you. Every for Sale does not have that. single time. Uh, it, it's it's now I carry around skull and uh, for sale as my light party yeah. games wherever I'm at. You mean or you mean high society? What I say, high society. You yeah. said for sale. I meant to cut out. I used to carry for sale. You I used to carry for sale. It's been replaced by high society. High society. Thank just you. like Tammany Hall has been replaced by what? Ooh, Tammany Hall. You just traded Tammany I'm, Hall. Did I am you not? currently trading out Tammany Hall for a game called Polis. I uh, think you traded Tammany Hall because of Godfather. Yeah, it just wasn't. Tammany Hall is an excellent game, but it has been killed. And the thing is about it, it's one of those games that, in my opinion, is very highly overrated. People talk about it all the time. Well. Like, it's a great game. And, and it is a good game. It is a, it is a phenomenal game in what it does. It's just been killed. Um, it's area control with special roles. And I've got to like just, it because the time we played it, five player. You won it. I won. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, so there's that. Now, I just want to bring out that High Society is an old Reiner Knizia game that just came out by... It was by, old, reprinted. By OG. OG. Osprey Games. Thank Osprey. you, Osprey. The next game... I love Osprey Games. So far. Okay, wait. We we're just killing it with Osprey Games. Osprey Games. King is dead. Love it. Uh, London. London. Love it. Love it. Where's the Aliens game? High Society. Where's the Aliens Okay. Love Escape it. Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space, a rather lengthy title. Yep. But it's OG. Still a good game. I love their boxing. 
They have the same box for all these big games. London, King is Dead, London. No, wait. Escape from Aliens, whatever. Now High Society. Literally. off. Literally? You've said literally like 18 times. I know we do. Because that's our, that's our word. It is it? One, two, three, four games. The four games that I even know Osprey has had. Do they have another game? Yeah. What? The Lost Expedition. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's a good solo. You just let it, anything that's OG we like. Anything Osprey games, buy it. I don't really like Lost Expedition that I do. much, but it's, it's a piece, good solo. It is a good solo. It's an interesting uh, it's, solo. It's, it's, interesting. it's interesting. For me, Lost Expedition beats out what's the other oh, 1914 oh, World War II. Oh, oh, the Grizzled? The Grizzled. For no. me, Lost Expedition beats out The Grizzled. Nothing beats out The Grizzled in terms of co-op card games to me, but I, I no. will say they're both. They're both. I, I actually like I the solo. I enjoy Lost Expedition solo better than the solo. I'm not saying the game Grizzled, but for the solo Grizzled, oh, I yeah. appreciate Lost Expedition better. I'll give you that. So that is four or five Lost Exped- uh, Osprey games. They're all hits. Oh, gee. You're doing a great job. You're doing good. As a matter of fact, I played another. So for your next game, whatever it is, send us a free copy to review. <laughs> That's what we're That's going called after. selling That's out. the only reason we created this podcast. That's, that's called selling out. <laughs> that's a sell out. Uh, We you, will sell out in a heartbeat. I'll tell you another game that was made by Osprey Games that I played at BGG that I completely left off my list because it was neither. What? Yeah. It was not my top five, and it wasn't meh. It was it was a decent game that I enjoyed. Osprey? Osprey. The Star Cartel. Never heard of it. Look it up. Look it up. Are you serious? I'm serious. It's a simple card game. You've never mentioned this game. I know. I just remembered it because uh what the problem was wow. what the problem was is that I went down and got it and forgot I had it, and then like at midnight Bubba was up coding. It was like, I can't sleep, I can't sleep. And I was like, let's play this we game. We have got to get Bubba on this podcast. <laughs> Let somebody know what Bubba is. Um, people think Bubba is a myth. No, Bubba's not a myth. Bubba's a man. He's real. He's real. He's OG, too. <laughs> He's OG. And uh, so we, we stayed up and we played Star Cartel. I actually woke Enrique up. Enrique <laughs> was over there. He's over there saying, I was like, hey, we're going to What? I said, we're going to play a game. What are we playing? <laughs> we're playing this game. It doesn't matter. Just come over. <laughs> if we played this game, it's a simple, uh, you're, you're, it, the theme of it. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it because it's I've it's such a simple thing. I've never heard There's of it. There's a market. And the prices of these like five items go up and down. When you take cards, you're taking them off and you're filling up your spaceship. Your spaceship's a nine, so you can take nine uh, spaces worth of stuff. You take nine spaces of stuff and you ship it out. And whatever you have the most of like gets sold. But whatever you have the least of, you pocket. You hide it. And prices go up or down depending on what you've uh, sold. And so the idea is that you want to drive up the price of something and still have it. Anyway, Star Cartel OG, uh, great game. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a freebie for I you. Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even know that was a game. Good. It's good. It's like 15 bucks on cool stuff. Um, uh, the next game I'm going to talk about is probably a top 10 game for us. I say it probably because we haven't done our list this year yet, and they'll probably be towards the end of the year. This game, I, have, I bought it. Uh, when it first, now it's a reprint. It's my Reiner Canizia, who also did High Society. Reiner Canizia, he's the man. When it comes to bidding, when it comes to bidding, when it comes to bidding, he, you just can't. The man. You can't. You cannot go wrong. This game, Raw, we did not really like. Did not like Raw. Uh, that was a people f- love it. That's a it's a big one. Uh, uh, no, we didn't, we mi- didn't like. Miss it. me with the Raw. Miss me with the Raw. Bra. Go uh, high society, Medici or is, modern art. Medici, Mount Medici's good, but we'll modern, modern art, art modern art is the best bidding game I've ever played. Okay, we're gonna go modern art. Let's discuss modern art. We're gonna talk about modern art, but before I do, I gotta plug okay. these people. Go ahead, because it's made by Simon. Simon picked it up. Come on, and they picked it back up and they reprinted. It. it. Has excellent art. Simon. Medici, yes. No, 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 no. Modern art. Modern art is done by oh. Simon. It got very little attention when it came out last year or the year before. I picked it up for dirt cheap. Bought it from somebody. Love it. It is a bidding game. Simon, who also did The Godfather, which is our game of the year last year. We like Simon games. 
Uh, Simon also did. Uh, what other Simon games do we have on our shelf? Why am I glancing? Lorenzo. Oh yeah, this my like my favorite Euro. Your favorite Euro Boom. of all time. Uh, Simon has solid games. Uh, Godfather. Oh yeah. So Simon is just just a Simon does good. Simon and TMG to us have been knocking them out of the park here lately. Simon Z Man. When I look at our shelves, OG. When I look at our shelves, I see a lot of OG. I see a lot of uh, of Rio of Rio Grande. Actually, we have a lot of Rio Grande games. Where Simon? What are you looking at? Uh, I'm looking at Concordia. I'm looking at uh, 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 where's Shogun? Where did you do with Shogun? Oh, Shogun is Queen Games. I'm um, Queen Games. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm we looking don't have a whole lot of real grand airlines Europe. Love airlines Europe. I love airlines Europe, airlines but that's Europe. about two real grand games. <laughs> Well, the two that we have <laughs> are pretty... And actually, of a queen game, Shogun is probably about the only one we really like at this moment in time. Yeah, Lancaster was a bummer. Before we get no, into no, modern no, art, wait, wait, before we get on. into modern art, let's back okay. up to Lancaster. Okay. Before we get into modern art, we're going to talk about Lancaster. Okay. Lancaster's an old... Don't say it was a bummer. Don't say it was a bummer. It was kind of a bummer. Did you Land- know, did you know, fun fact... Here we that go. a group of cheetahs is called <laughs> a Lancaster, <laughs> a coalition. <laughs> really? Yes, a coalition of cheetahs. <laughs> so let me use that in a sentence for you. Help! I'm being attacked by a coalition of cheetahs. <laughs> They're going to murder me. Ooh. Yeah. So then, what are you to believe? The cheetahs are killing you, or the crows? Do you know what a group of buzzards are called? Buzzards. Flock. A wake. Oh, oh my, that's because you dead. That's pretty cool. <laughs> if a bu- if a flock of buzzards is on top of you, you dead. You, <laughs> I guarantee you. I guarantee you. You ain't woke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Jerry, you're so funny. You're such a cad. <sighs> Queen uh, games. Queen games. Yeah. Um, they tend to be old. <laughs> Like like the Queen. The <laughs> queen Games. Um, what was the one that you just said? You were talking the other day. And you're like, I've never played it. It's a classic, but I want to play it. Queen. Uh, and I had it, but I sold it because it was just a card game. Oh. Uh, and you're building walls. Alhambra. And, Alhambra. And I said that I was ashamed that I was a snob. Alhambra and I a, never had played Alhambra. Alhambra is a classic. It, I understand how it is appreciated. It's very... To me, Alhambra is Airlines Europe. But Airlines <laughs> Europe is good. But Airlines Europe is fun. It's fun. It's investing. Alhambra, you're building a... Alhambra, you're building a city, basically. You're investing in these different colors. You're building a wall that the longer the longest wall counts for so many points. It's Queen Games. It's old. Mm. I don't like the card play in it because you might it's random. You might get stuck with these cards you can't do nothing with. Uh, it's a fine game. I can appreciate what it was in the day. But Queen Games, to me, puts out old stuff. Old stuff. It's just tired. If it, I describe Queen Games... In my s- selection right now, I have Shogun, Lancaster, Armageddon. We've played Shogun... We enjoy it. Like it's it, long, but it's long. And it's old. It's old. We can tell it's old by the gameplay. Lancaster, we played it. I enjoyed it. I, I kind of liked the kicking out of the knights with my three knight to your two I never want to play it again. But the the laws that go into effect... Waste of time. They really slowed down the game to a grind that we did not enjoy. That, that seemed unimportant. The voting seemed unimportant. Jerry had like 30 votes. He could have voted at any point just all by himself. But I didn't vote. We just didn't care. I just didn't vote. We never voted. Like part of Lancaster, I appreciate and can like the laws I wish could be fixed. But you see its age. Yeah. I also have Armageddon in my possession by Queen Games. That came out like horrible. But it came out like horrible. I think it came out in 2015. It has that or 16. The thing I hate about Armageddon, everybody knows whoever plays 
across from uh, Ben Affleck, you always die. That's true. Whether it's Matt Damon. Armageddon's my top three movie. Whether it's Bruce Willis. You just die. Superman. He great killed soundtrack. Superman. Great soundtrack. Who? Ben Affleck. Oh, you're going crossover. I'm crossed over. Armageddon is one of the greatest movies of all time. Michael Bay produced. James Horner soundtrack. Mm. I think. Maybe Hans Zimmer. I don't know. But it's a great soundtrack. I thought it was Aerosmith. No, Aerosmith really did have a big part. That did you I'm know? Preemptively taking Wait, your phone. No. <laughs> preemptively taking your phone. I don't want. Did you know that was their biggest song of all time? Yes, yes. Aerosmith has been rock gods for Forever. years, I decades. They... Armageddon comes out. That's the number one song. Okay, I want to bring this up. Shrek. Can I have my phone back? No. Shrek, Shrek. Shrek. Back. I'm not going to inform Nobody phone call. cared about Smash Mouth anymore until they <laughs> redid that Beatles song. I might. Armageddon. We cannot play an Armageddon. No. Do not play any amazing. more music because we are going to I'm get. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. So Nobody cares about I want to talk about modern art. But Armageddon, the movie. 50 like billion dollars. Like how much did it made? The game I have in my possession. And I've had my possession. You know why I have it in my possession? You say possession one more time. It went on sale for like ten bucks. Wow! So you got it. I, I, Tom said it's one of his top who's, queen games. Who's Tom? Tom Vassell of the Dice Tower. Don't know him. Yeah, you do. Nope. Sorry. Oh, yeah, you do. Don't know him. <laughs> Go ahead. So I was like, okay, it's solid. It's got bidding in it. We love bidding, and I just had to get it. Look, I'm gonna say this right now. <laughs> queen games. They make some tired games. I got into a tournament with Pioneers last year. Does anybody know what the game Pioneers? Do you remember Pioneers? Of course you don't. It just came out. It's tiresome. Don't buy it. It's tiresome. It's yeah. just not. They make tired games. The last good game of theirs that I played that I loved was Shogun. Who? Shogun's good. Queen? Queen games. They made Pioneers? Yeah. Really? And it's tiresome. They like a lot of yellow in all their boxes, which I don't know. It's called Art Design, guys. Hire somebody that can use a different hue. Well, Speaking of which, uh, I want to go back to beautiful art. Go back. Which makes me think of modern art. Go back. Which is the best bidding game that we own. It right? Is. Is, uh, no, no, oh, modern art, yes. Best bidding game we've owned. Now, let me describe what modern art is. But again, it well, goes back to who you play it with. I will say that I know that a group of stingrays is We're, called a fever. <laughs> I found this website that tells what different groups of animals are, and the fact that you call a group of stingways, stingrays, a fever. Is that what they, I mean, what a great, who, who decides this? I got a fever. I got a fever, and the only prescription is, is more, more stingrays. stingrays. <laughs> oh, man. A group, of, a group of owls. A group of owls. A hoot. Nope. They should be called a hoot. Nope. Do you know what they called? A parliament. You've got to be no, kidding me. No, a group of owls. Why do they get such a regal thing and crows are called murder? Murder. Crows, I would rise up if I were you and take over the owl position. Do you know what a group... You're being held down. A group of mice. Oppressed. A group of mice, which I thought was a gr what a group of mice is called. A group of mice? Yeah. Not men. Mice. Of mice. Uh... <laughs> Subcultural reference there. Cultural a reference. group of mice is called, don't tell me, I'm going to guess, a lemon. No. A mischief. Oh. A mischief of mice. That's, if I was a mouse, I would be offended. Oh, mosquitoes. A so, group of mosquitoes uh, is called a scourge. Well, they should that be called a scourge. Sense. That makes sense. That makes A mischief of mice. A question. Yes. Who sees these groupings of animals? Like, I've seen a mouse. I've never seen, like, a horde of them coming toward me and say, Oh, my God, they're up to mischief. <laughs> well, I mean, well, you just never know. The three blind mice, they were up to mischief. Uh, up to no good. They're up to no good. Trying to make trouble in my neighborhood. You <laughs> Look, you're not the Prince of Bel-Air. But do you know who... Uh, oh, really? Is, Are you going to name off all animals on this podcast? I am fascinated <laughs> by this. Who decides this? I tell you, it's not right. 
What? And a group of owls is called Parliament. Why? They eat groups of mice called Mi- scourges. Mis- oh, mis- mischief. The mosquitoes yeah. and are scourges. Yeah. But owls are murder. Uh, crows are. I, I'm already well, confused. Here's the thing. Crows are murder. Here's the thing. It's wrong. Crows are probably about murder because of oh uh, the writer. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. And owls and are parliament. Those are ravens, though. I know, but they got confused, just like I did just Same then. Same thing. Uh, owls are parliaments because parliament takes care of mischief. Just so like owls, owls eat mice. mice. And that's very fascinating. And it's also fascinating to know that a group of vipers... You're using fascinating very loosely. It's now. called a generation. <laughs> Wait, what? Vipers. A g- group of generation. Uh, no, so like what, run into all these groups of animals? When you see those guys that live down the like street, a bunch of ga- like a bunch of snakes and leather jackets. <laughs> when, hey, when, when you see your neighbor, generation. When you see your neighbor over there, he's got the mullet and he's got his, he's got his Dodge Viper. <laughs> when he's got those two of them, the old one, new one's like, oh, well, there's a generation. But, <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of owls with white wigs on. I hope he's not a fan. <laughs> we're uh, in Parliament. Speaking of, speaking Hi, of, old boy, we're gonna stick to this. We got to get talking what? about modern art. Okay. Modern art has great artwork in it. It's designed by... A, That's a severe left turn, just FYI. Reiner Knizia. We went from groups of animals to modern art. Modern art is one of the games that I do not know how to tell you how to win. And, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what strategy is to it. I, I win it. I've won it. I've had, I probably have the highest score ever in modern art. Oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm so humble. But it's... <laughs> Hard it, it, to be it, humble. When you are given, you're given a hand of cards, and they're all paintings by different artists. And there's like five different artists, and so the, the artists are color coded to help you understand which one goes where. And each card has a different type of auction on the card. And so when you offer this card up for auction, it's that type of auction. And the different auctions are a, just a regular auction where everybody just keeps bidding until somebody says, "Okay, they bid the highest, and nobody else will bid." There's a blind auction where everybody puts their money in their hand and they open up it at the last and this is the price. There's a double auction where you auction two paintings at once. There's also a fixed priced auction where you say, I want this much money and the person to your left can either take it or pass until it gets all the way around until it gets to you. And if it gets to you, then you have to pay that price. So there's various types of auctions on each one of these cards. Here is the thing that blows my mind. The paintings are worthless. When you begin the game, Everything is worthless. A, each round, you're just auctioning cards off. And the round ends when a fourth of a certain artist's card is played. The round is already over. The, you don't auction that card. The round is over. And then you look out. And you see what cards have been bought in auction. Whoever has bought, whichever artist has sold the most uh, paintings, their paintings are now priced at like $30, 30 million apiece. The second is worth $20 million. The third is worth $10 million. And then the players sell those cards for that price. So the first round is just the setup round, sort of. The second round, you do the same thing, but the prices will compound. But on the first round, if your, car, if your paintings were worth $30 million a piece and this artist doesn't sell any paintings whatsoever, his cards are now worthless that round. So the first round... It's just a setup. It's just uh, you don't know what anything is worth anything. It just happens to be what the players decide. Right. But the first place painter gets 30, then 20, the third, second, and then third gets 10. So then you have that as a base. So then the next round, okay, this painter, he's already worth 30. So then most people say, all right, I'm going to start this one out at 30 because that's what he was worth. And then as the rounds progress, it gets kind of more crazy. And also the idea is that as you see that an artist's work is worth more, obviously if this guy's if this artist was number one the first round, number one the second round, now his, art, now his paintings are worth $60 million a piece. This third round, when you offer one of his paintings, if you offer one out of your hand – into the auction, you know you're going to make pretty sizable amount of money on it. And so it's like this idea that you want to make money off this card, this card, but then at the same time be trying to mess other players up by driving down the price of that card. So you're 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 trying to mess other players over by offering cards that 
they're speculating what their worth might be. If this sounds confusing, it's because it is. The first time you play modern art, you really won't know what you're doing. The it's, second game is amazing. The second and third round, you'll understand You'll it. understand it. It will click. This is my question for you. Yes. I hate to admit this. Go ahead. We've played four games of modern art. Here, yeah, here recently. You've won all four. Here recently, yes. Why is that? Why have I won? What do you do to win modern art? Okay. Well, I've, well, number one, full disclosure, I've played four games with you. I played it several times before I got the game because I've. How dare lost. you? But, anyways. Um, Interesting. The, Duly noted. There are two ways of thinking when you're playing modern art. The first thing is, is that you're, you're playing two different people. You're playing the person who's selling the art, and you're playing a person who's buying art. And so what I will do is I'll watch and say that this one particular artist, he's selling it. His paintings are worth $60 million a piece, and they're probably going to be worth eighty to $90 million this piece. So what I do is I'll offer one of his cards, get paid on that card, obviously, make a great deal of money, but then I'll spend the rest of the round trying to mess y'all up trying to drive the price down, trying to do everything to make sure that his paintings are not worth the top spot. And so I have to shift gears and go, all right, I'm offering this to make money, but then I offer this card knowing that I want to buy this one. And so I'm, I'm very selectively picking up certain cards. But at the same time, one tactic that I always do is at the beginning of the round, I count my money. And so I know exactly how much profit I make from round to round. And like I think my highest score is like six hundred and something million. Six sixty eight. Six sixty eight. Thank you for keeping records. And you start off with BGG 100, stats. Start off with a hundred million. And so in four rounds, I made six hundred and sixty eight million dollars in uh, total. So that's how I keep track of it. I just track my profits and go back and forth. But modern art is one of the most amazing bidding games. If you don't like bidding, if it's a mechanic that you just like in certain games. Do not buy modern art. No. Buy 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 high society. It's lighter, something you might enjoy. But do not buy modern art. If you truly love bidding games, this is the game for you. Matter of fact, the game encourages you to, as you're running an auction to kind of give a brief overview of the art and say something, you know, kind of snobbish. John 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 always does a good job of selling his art. He does an excellent job selling his he art. He gets into it. He becomes a curator. But this is this is what I want to talk about, as you mentioned earlier, about how sometimes when you play games, you play games with people that make them funner. When we play modern art, do you realize every time we play it, we we'll always crack open a ball of something. <laughs> we speak in high... That always helps. Yeah. We start talking in British accents. Sure. We start talking about the uh, about the art. We start just... Because we all... The four of us literally know nothing about art. No. No. It's like, uh, you know, okay. And, and we just we just make up stories about Thomas this Thomas Kincaid, the painter of light. Yes. That's it. <laughs> and we start... We start just... And it is it is literally... I, I, I made a joke last time we played that uh, we need to buy a top hat and a monocle and just sit around and <laughs> just act like we're art curators because the theme of this game comes through. It's made, like I said, made by Simon. It's a... It's a longer game. It's not a quick game. It's not a light game. But it is by far the best bidding game I have ever played. Here, here. Here, here. What time is it? Uh, we're at 55 minutes. Wow. All right. So we got to get off of here. But before we get off, before we get off, a group of rhinoceroses. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is it something weird? No. Yes. A group of rhinoceroses yes, called... Hey. It's the name of a movie that was very popular. One one word, one multiple, multiple like Oscars, Emmys, and everything. Citizen Canes. No, one word, one word. Oh, wait, one word. A group of a group of rhinoceroses called Citizen Canes. Are you serious? Godfathers. No. Crash. Oh gosh. Was you know what our group would be called? We're a group of snobs. 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 I also know a group of ravens is called an unkindness. I've heard of that. Mm, okay. Well, why are birds getting the shaft? That's my question. Unkindness? Murder? I don't know. They call wait, wait. It. Look up a group of doves. Is that what a group of doves is called? Well, that's a dove caught. A no. group of okay, doves. look up pigeons then. A, 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 a group of doves or a pitting. A group of what did you say? Pigeons. Pigeons? Uh, they're uh, called uh, a flight Oh, that's not Yeah, that's real. not that great. Well, there you have it. 
We hope that you have enjoyed a array of conversation, which I'm an array. Ra- yes, an array is a group of hedgehogs. <laughs> uh, I, I knew it. Follow is it us. Really? Yes, follow us on boardgamesnobs.com, on our Twitter, on our our BGG. If you like us, if you like me and Jerry, if you really like us, if you really like me and Jerry, besides our four big, uh, our eight biggest fans, Joe G, shout out, friendly shout out. Frankie, friendly Frankie, shout out. Giuseppe, shout out. You don't have to say shout out every time. Jeff, shout out. S.O. <laughs> G off. Jeff, that was our fourth one. That's Wait, it. What's our other four? I thought we had eight. I know a group of cockroaches is called an intrusion. <laughs> That's where we need to stop. When we... <laughs> Wait, what's our other four fans? I don't know. But you this, need to this, contact us more often. Joe G writes regularly on here, the Board Game Guild. Here's something that we like. Giuseppe writes regularly to me as Board Game Diner on Instagram. Friendly Frankie is just a memorable name. That's the only reason I remember. Here's something. Here's something that I would like. As a if com- you like us, recommend us to your friends and let us know that you like us. Because as a, we have low self-esteem. I don't. And I sit in a dark corner and I cry. Well, you have clinical depression. I do. As a congregation, which is, <laughs> which is a group of alligators, I think that we be nice if somebody would send us an email at boardgamesnobs at gmail dot com. Uh, just what do you want us to talk about? What do you want something us to, new? A question or something? A game, perhaps? A you game want, uh, you want reviewed? Okay. If you tell us a game you want to review, ooh, now the, the, this Wait. is the this is the caveat. It's got to be available. We don't like fantasy and magical games. We're out of that. That is kind of wow. Those are a, just kind of. Uh, there's tons of people for that. If you have something sci-fi, something bidding, something worker placement, something cool cool that you want us to record we'll be all over it like a battery of barracudas a battery stop go ahead what is this website you're on uh the almighty guru.com <laughs> i think uh i think i might have stumbled on a cult website go ahead go ahead let us know something you want us to discuss something that you find interesting something you like about us something you hate about us we're open to that too. Jerry's all about that. I'm, he likes to take on haters. I love hate. An army of frogs. Uh, ribbits. No, it's an, literally an army of frogs. Army. An army. It's called an army. Why do they get such a cool name? I don't know. Nets are called a cloud. Well, that makes sense. Okay. That's biblical. Well, that's uh, that's all for today. To an hour. Yep. This is Jerry. This is Gabby. Hasta la vista. Whatever. Whatever.